Butter tastes good. There's no doubt about that. But according to its proponents, ghee tastes even better. And they may be right, thanks to some very interesting chemistry that occurs when you are producing it. But what is ghee? It is a form of clarified butter. Well, let's clarify what that means. Ghee plays an important role in Indian cuisine and also in ancient Indian medicine, and it has a long history. If you take milk and you churn it, it changes into butter and buttermilk. The butter floats on top and it can be skimmed off. What is it? It is about 80 to 84 percent fat, 14 to 18 percent water, and 2 to 4 percent uh, milk solids, which are composed of protein, sugar, mostly lactose, which is the milk sugar, and small amounts of, uh, of minerals. So that's what butter is. How do you make clarified butter? Straightforward process. You just heat butter. When you heat it, water evaporates and the milk solids form a precipitate. If you then take some cheesecloth, you can filter off the milk solids and what you have left behind is uh, this thick viscous liquid, somewhat tinted with brown. That's what we call G. It is almost all fat. But the word almost is very important in this case because there are small amounts of molecules that give flavor and also color to the G. And these are the results of two chemical processes. One is the Maillard reaction, the other is caramelization. In the Maillard reaction, Sugars react with amino acids. Amino acids form when proteins break down. And they form all kinds of compounds, which are flavorful. In caramelization, sugars, when heated, form another class of compounds. So altogether, the Maillard reaction on caramelization produce dozens and dozens of compounds that give some flavor and some color to the G. They're present in very small amounts, because uh, of the heat, and they're not found in ordinary uh, butter. G has somewhat better keeping properties because it doesn't contain any water. Bacteria need water in order to multiply. Uh, but this, of course, is not of consequence in modern kitchens. It may be important in the developing world. Now, what about the potential health benefits of G? And there are advocates who say that it is superior to butter. It's true that G contains small amounts of butyric acid, uh, more than butter. And butyric acid is important because it is the form of uh, substance that is converted into energy by cells in the colon. And they need that energy to multiply and to be healthy. But the truth is that the amount of butyric acid present in G is very, very small. It's essentially inconsequential. If you want more butyric acid in your gut, then eat more fruits, more vegetables, and more whole grains, because gut bacteria metabolize those into butyric acid. It is also correct to say that G contains somewhat less lactose than butter, that's the milk sugar, and that may be of uh, some significance to people of lactose intolerance. But the fact is that butter itself has so little lactose that indeed it is generally well tolerated by people who have uh, uh, lactase uh, deficiency. Then there are claims that uh, G can lead to weight loss because of the medium chain fatty acids it contains. Uh, claims like that hold no water. And that's something that they have in common with G which also has no water. But there's something else in common to G and to butter. They both contain saturated fats. About half of all the fat in both are saturated. And saturated fat is the type of fat that leads to increases in blood cholesterol. So uh, we want to limit the intake of either butter or G. But it is certainly uh, correct to say that G is somewhat more flavorful than butter, but use it in small amounts. And
And that for today is our Kappa Joe.